Hi, this is Mark Weitzman again, back with some exercises from the Feynman Lectures on Physics. Um, I want to, um, I'm going to do two problems on gravity and orbits and something, and I just want to review, um, we all know that the orbits of the planets are ellipses, and I just want to review some simple mathematics. So here you have a poorly semi-hand drawn ellipse, and the uh, A is the semi-major axis. Remember the definition of, of an ellipse is that the sum of the distances from these two points is always the same. And so you can sort of see that this whole thing is 2A or from the focus this one is going to be A and this one because it's symmetric it's going to be 2A. So A is what's called the semi-major axis. B is the semi-minor axis, the smaller part, half of it, just this part from here to here is B. C is the distance from one focuses, there's two focuses, and a planet orbits this with the sun at one focus. Usually it's drawn on that side. Feynman drew it on this side and his, or the authors of the exercises put it on this side. So I'll put it on this side. So C is from the center to the focus, that distance. E is the eccentricity, which I'll define over there. It's just a ratio of C to A, it's the eccentricity. RP, this small distance, is the perihelion distance. This is the sun. Think of this as the sun and this is the planet. This is the closest approach right here. And RA is the farthest approach when it's right over there. And some basic algebra, you can see from the Pythagorean theorem that A squared is B squared plus C squared. The eccentricity is defined as the ratio of C to A. So if this was the circle, B and everything would be the same and, and so the ratio would be one. Um, I'm sorry, the ratio for a circle would be zero. In other words, the foci would both be at the center over here. RP, the perihelion distance, is this from here to here, which is A minus RP. I'm sorry, A minus RP is C, so RP is A minus C, and RA over here is C plus this distance is A. And sometimes for Kepler's third law, you might need to remember that the area of an ellipse is pi AB. So I want to do a problem now with um, this is problem 3.14 in the exercises for the Feynman lectures. And it says a comet rounds the sun at a perihelion distance of one million kilometers. So RP is equal to 1.00 times 10 to the sixth kilometers. Its velocity at that point, so RP would correspond to this point. Here's the sun. Here would be the comet. Its velocity at the perihelion is given as 500 kilometers per second. And the first part of the question says, what is the radius of curvature RC of the orbit at the perihelion? Now, unless you're an astronomy student, if you're a physics student like me, you got two major problems with this. One is you have to remember that the perihelion is always the closest approach. And the other one, you have to remember how to spell this. And I can never spell it. I always leave off the I. So um, that's the hard part of this problem. Otherwise, it's just a plug and chug. But there is something interesting here. We want the radius of curvature. Not the distance from the sun, that's just the perihelion distance. We want the radius of curvature. We have to pretend this is like a circle. And I will um, show you how to do that right now. So what we use is we use the fact that the force between the sun and the comet divided by rp squared, this force is equal to, and we know at the perihelion, it's really, this, it's like a circle here. This is what we want, the radius of curvature. Of course, RC. 
So it's really going in a circle at that, and we know from circular motion what the force is going to be. It's just going to be the mass of the comet times the velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature. This is the old mv squared of rc. This gives us v squared of rc is the acceleration, the circular acceleration, times the mass is the circular force, and this is the only force in the problem, gravity. So from this we can solve easily rc is equal to v squared rp squared over g mass of the sun. Plugging in numbers, I won't bore you with all that. You're going to get 1.8835 times 10 to the sixth kilometers. That's the answer to part A. Now, he wants part B. Part B says, for an ellipse with semi-major axis A and semi-minor axis B, the radius of curvature at perihelion is, so they're actually giving you what the formula is, RC is equal to B squared over A. It says, if you know RC, which we already calculated, and RP, which we're given, you should be able to find right relation involving A and only these quantities do so and find A. They gave this formula for the radius of curvature at the perihelion for an ellipse is B squared over A. And I just want to quickly derive that right now. Um, you might remember from the calculus that the usual formula for curvature is D2Y dx2 over 1 plus dy dx squared to the 3 halves. And um, we could use this, but I'm, I'm using a coordinate system where um, x goes this way and uh, y goes this way. And actually, I'm going to measure x from... Um, from here. So this is where the Y starts actually. And um, at the perihelion, this is actually a perihelion, the sun's here, but I don't want to work with negative numbers and so pretend like the sun's back here and we're working at this point now. The, uh, the slope is infinite so we can't use this formula, but obviously we can use the same formula with the other coordinates. The curvature doesn't care which axis you use. So let's use this d2x dy2 over 1 plus dx dy squared to the 3 halves. And we're not worrying about signs. We should be taking absolute values and everything. Now, the equation for this ellipse, you might remember from your 11th grade analytic geometry or maybe 8th grade analytic geometry is simply uh, x plus ea because I'm measuring from that point. We know c, this is c and this is x and c is ea. So I'm going to go x plus ea squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. That's our equation for an ellipse. Now let's take a derivative, d dy. So we're going to get 2x plus ea dx dy over a squared plus 2y over b squared equals 0. Okay, now let's take another derivative. So this is the first term, we're going to get 2, taking the derivative of this is going to be dx dy, and then we're multiplying by dx dy, so that's squared 2x dy squared over a squared plus 2x plus ea d2x dy2 over a squared 
plus 2 over b squared equals 0. So that's our um, basic equation. Now, at the perihelion, x is equal to a1 minus e. Simply, because uh, I'm measuring just this distance, it's a minus c. c is ea, so it's a times 1 minus e. y is equal to 0. dx dy equals 0 because it's dy dx is infinity, so dx dy, if you look at it from this way, it's flat, 0. So I substitute in here, and I'm going to get 2, um, this term goes, x plus ea is just a, so I get 2a over a squared plus 2a over a squared times, times the second derivative. plus 2 over b squared equals 0. And now I compute the, uh, the curvature k. This formula here, since this is 0, this is just 1. 1 to the 3 halves is 1. So it's just the second derivative of y with respect to x. And that's just equal to minus 2 over b squared divided by 2 over a. Again, we're not take, we're taking the absolute values. So the curvature is equal to a over b squared. And the radius of curvature is 1 over the curvature, which is equal to b squared over a. So that's what I wanted to um, prove. Okay, I just want to now finish, um, now that we've proven that the radius of curvature is b squared over a, I want to finish parts b and c. So we have this formula here, and um, I just want to calculate, I, we, we calculated that r in part a, we calculated the radius of curvature as 1.8835 times 10 to the sixth kilometers for this particular comet in this particular example. And now let's, um, let's just um, find a relationship and we should be able to find what A is, semi-major axis. So let's start with uh, RP, which we know that was given in the problem. It's equal to A minus C. That's, you know, look back on this board, that was one of the relationships. That's equal to a minus square root of a squared minus b squared. Go back here. a squared minus b squared is c squared, so square root of c. That means this implies that if we subtract that a minus rp is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. This implies that a minus rp squared equals a squared minus b squared. So we now have that implies that b squared is equal to a squared minus a minus rp squared. This is equal to the a squared, so I've got to cancel. We we'll get. 2a rp minus rp squared. Okay. Now, rc, which we have, is equal to b squared over a is equal to 2a rp minus rp squared over a. Now this implies that 
a times rc is equal to 2arp minus rp squared. Now we're just going to fact out the a. So we're going to get a times rc minus 2rp is equal to minus rp squared. And finally, we get a is equal to rp squared over 2rp minus rc. Now we have rp from here and we have rc from here. And so uh, we just substitute and we're going to get a is equal to 8.5837 times 10 to the 6th kilometers. Okay, so that's um, just about most of what we need. And then finally, part C, it says if you're able to solve A from the above information, you should be able to calculate the period TC of the comet. Um, the easiest way to calculate the period once you have the semi-major axis is to use Kepler's law. This is derived several places. I'm not going to derive it again. 4 pi squared a cubed over g m s. We have a, Newton's gravitational constant. Look up the mass of the sun and you're going to get 4.3371 times 10 to the fifth seconds and this is equal to 5.01 days. Okay, just some plug and chug calculations and using the basic facts of an ellipse. This was the key idea in this problem, which they sort of gave it to you, but I derived it to you as well, that the radius of a curvature of an ellipse, a formula. So um, I'm going to do one other much harder problem on gravity um, in the next video, and then um, probably that will be it for any... Uh, any uh, orbit problems or anything. We're not going to do anything. I don't think we're going to do anything with transfer orbits or anything like that. There's a very good book that was used at Caltech for a while, a long time ago. Many of you might remember the Mechanical Universe. They had a book, um, that was the name of the book, I believe, the Mechanical Universe. They actually do some things in there on transfer orbits. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.